SpaceX has commenced the countdown to the upcoming IFT-3 launch, unveiling the latest developments at the launch site. One notable highlight is the significant transformation in the tank farm, a crucial component that plays a dual role in storing and supplying liquid methane and liquid oxygen, the propellants used for both Starship and Super Heavy. This tank farm has been built since 2021, and this change is a pivotal enhancement in the infrastructure. Over the past weekend, a team of SpaceX workers was observed removing one of the eight towering vertical tanks, located a few meters away from the launch tower. This action could signal a shift away from the current use of vertical tanks, which was something many had anticipated. You might recall the significant damage suffered by the vertical tank bins after the first Starship launch. It was quite a site. Subsequently, with the second Starship launch, the impacts on the vertical tanks appeared less severe, although they were not completely unaffected. While SpaceX can carry out repairs, it doesn't rule out the possibility of needing to replace these shells due to the incurred damage. Following the Starship launch in April of 2023, Elon Musk took steps to adjust the tank farm structure in an effort to mitigate risks to this vital infrastructure. This recent move by SpaceX could indicate further Further adjustments or a shift in strategy to address these concerns. We're going with more of the vacuum jacketed kind of giant hot dog looking tanks as opposed to the, <laughs> the so the, yeah, it, vacuum jacketed giant hot dog tanks. So the, the, those are in the best shape and those are what we want anyway. So some of the tanks will be, will be, uh, uh, yeah, probably removing and replacing uh, with the hot dog tanks. The vertical tanks could indeed be considered one of SpaceX's notable missteps. They present several challenges, including hurdles related to methane certification, restrictions on water filling, and their proximity to the launch pad. In contrast, the forthcoming implementation of horizontal tanks will see them enclosed and shielded by reinforced concrete barriers, potentially addressing these issues more effectively. Furthermore, their enhanced stability during transportation and seismic events events coupled with a lower center of gravity renders them more manageable for maintenance and cleaning. The flexibility to customize them with various features and compartments further amplifies their suitability for diverse chemical storage needs. Hence, Elon Musk's decision to transition the entire tank farm system from vertical to horizontal is entirely appropriate. As a matter of fact, we've observed the unexpected arrival of the horizontal or hot dog tanks in Starbase since November of 2023. The final replacement process has now commenced, gearing up for the third Starship flight scheduled for the first quarter of 2024. It's fascinating to witness the upgrade process at this location. We must acknowledge SpaceX's commendable work pace. The removal of tanks from its position just took 15 minutes. This undoubtedly foreshadows a promising installation process for the more efficient equipment set to replace the old water tanks soon. In any case, the timeline will depend on SpaceX's plan, and they will likely have a well-thought-out strategy to ensure the Starship program progresses with maximum efficiency. With the first step, SpaceX engineers have prioritized removing the non-functional water tanks over the operational ones that are heavily damaged. This raised many questions as to why, and while the company has not made any official announcements, Zach Golden, a longtime space SpaceX enthusiast has provided an explanation that seems quite fitting for this scenario. Out of the eight tanks present at the tank farm, there are two water tanks playing a critical role in the orbital tank farm system. They are a part of a large heat exchange system, similar to the self-pressurizing capability on the booster and the ship. It pressurizes five vertical cold tanks and seven horizontal cold tanks within the farm. Zach Golden suggests that in eliminating these tanks, SpaceX might need to create space for additional equipment to assume the functions originally performed by the water tanks. This notion appears to align with SpaceX's actions. Shortly after the removal of the first tank, the neighboring tank underwent a similar process, shedding its outer shell to reveal the gleaming tank core within. While it was anticipated that SpaceX might prolong the inner tank's duty, that didn't prove to be the case. The 
following day, a load spreader designed specifically to lift the GSE tank, the tank under the shell, arrived at the launch complex. As fate would have it, the time has come for the official removal of the GSE-8 tank. Initially intended to function as a liquid methane tank upon installation in October of 2021, it was later repurposed as a water tank in July of 2022. The removal of GSE-8 suggests that SpaceX might need to manage the OTF pressure system with just a single water tank, presenting a potential challenge for the upcoming flight. Is it possible that SpaceX is considering a replacement system, possibly incorporating the anticipated large steam vent to address this issue? What are your thoughts on this? Feel free to share your comments and insights down below. In addition to restructuring the tank farm, SpaceX is also actively taking significant leaps with the Starship prototypes. Particularly noteworthy is the progress with B-10 and S-28. Both booster and ship have successfully completed their respective test campaigns, marking a significant milestone in the ambitious project. B-10, the colossal rocket designed to launch the Starship upper stage, returned to the shipyard on January 2nd of 2024 for final modifications and checkouts before its flight. The booster had met with a challenge during a static fire test on December 21st of 2023. SpaceX engineers were forced to deploy an emergency liquid oxygen dump procedure, a testament to their readiness to handle unforeseen circumstances. However, the booster redeemed its previous hiccup with a successful 33-engine static fire on the 29th of the same month of the same year. Interestingly, this test was conducted without a spin prime test, implying that SpaceX confidence in their engines and installation processes has reached a new height. Additionally, the tests exhibited an improvement in propellant loading efficiency, which could potentially slash load times for full-stack operations. Parallel to B-10's progress, S-28-2 underwent rigorous testing. It successfully executed a full six-engine static fire on December 20th, followed by a single-engine static fire on the same day as Booster 10's 33-engine test. This is the second time SpaceX has statically fired both vehicles on the same day. Previously, on the 9th of August of 2022, they simultaneously conducted static fire tests for both Booster 7 and Ship 24. This latter event was referred to as a flight-like startup, hinting at the possibility of Ship 28 being primed for an orbital flight or a different trajectory. S-28 has now returned to the shipyard for final work, which includes tile repairs and the removal of temporary structures before the flight. The successful completion of the test campaigns for B-10 and S-28 marks a significant milestone in SpaceX's journey towards the third Starship flight. They will likely swiftly resume their high operational status. Despite SpaceX possibly being only weeks away from preparing both vehicles for flight, there has been no update from the company regarding the lessons learned from the previous Starship test flight in November. Although the Super Heavy Booster's 33 engines performed flawlessly during the launch, propelling the Starship upper stage into space, the flight faced subsequent challenges. Notwithstanding the overall success of the initial phase, the upper stage encountered self-destruction over the Gulf of Mexico. Additionally, the booster experienced complications during its return maneuver, resulting in an explosion before eventually executing a controlled splashdown at sea. The engineers at the company are currently focused on pinpointing and resolving the root causes behind these challenges. Following the analysis, the Federal Aviation Administration will need to conduct a thorough review and approve the investigation into the previous Starship flight before for granting a new commercial launch license to the world's leading private aeronautics firm. In the upcoming flight, Starship aims to reach near-orbital velocity, intending to cover a substantial distance around the Earth before re-entering the atmosphere near Hawaii, possibly saying aloha. While validating the performance of Starship's heat shield tiles during re-entry is crucial for understanding Musk's space venture, the primary objective remains achieving a fully successful 
successful launch. This marks the initial phase of the privately funded Starship program's pursuits. In tandem, the leading innovator of aerospace is actively preparing additional Starship vehicles in line with the company's development approach, emphasizing frequent test flights and swift iteration. I think maybe by the end of the year, they will actually get it down pat in a functional way. Not on cadence, but just demonstrating the reusability. Justice Palmer, CEO of the venture capital and advisory firm Fortuna Investments, which focuses heavily on the space industry, said of SpaceX's Starship efforts. So that's gonna be huge. As the countdown ticks for Starship's pivotal role in NASA's Artemis III, slated for late 2025 or 2026, time emerges as a critical factor in its development journey. Yet with this timeline in mind, what vital advancements and refinements must be swiftly achieved for Starship's readiness? How might the success or challenges encountered in Artemis 3 shape the future of deep space exploration? Join the conversation and share your insights on the race against time in Starship's evolution and its implications for the next frontier of lunar exploration in the comment section down below. And that's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please remember that your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. So for that, we thank you so much for watching, and we hope to see you again next time.